Yes, ma'am. Shh. Will you go down and buy two for us, Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> what are you doing, Bella? Nothing, dear. Don't wake yourself. What are you doing, Bella? Come here. Only for tea, my dear. Muffins, for tea. Muffins, eh? Yes, dear. He only comes so seldom. I, I thought I might surprise you. Why are you so apprehensive, Bella? I was not about to approach you. No, dear. I know you weren't. This fire's in ashes. Ring the bell, will you, Bella, dear, please? Oh, yes. Is it merely to put coal on, my dear? I can do that. Now then, Bella, we've had this out before. Be so good as to ring the bell. But, dear, Lizzie's out in the street. Let me do it. I can do it so easily. No, 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 no. Where's the girl? Let the girl come up if Lizzie's out. Oh, but, my dear... Go and ring the bell, please, Bella. There's a good child. What do you suppose the servants are for, Bella? Go on. Answer me. What do you suppose servants are for? To serve us, I suppose, Jack. Precisely. Then why but are I you... think we should consider them a little, that's all. Consider them? There's your extraordinary confusion of the mind again. You speak as though they work for no consideration. I happen to consider Elizabeth to the tune of £16 per annum and the girl ten, £26 pounds a year, all told. And if that is not consideration of the most acute and lively kind, I should like to know what is. Yes, Jack, I expect you are right. I have no doubt of it, my dear. It's sheer weak-mindedness to think otherwise. What's the weather doing? Is it still as yellow? Yes, it seems to be denser than ever. Shall you be going out in this, Jack, dear? Oh, I expect so. Unless it gets much worse after tea. Uh, come in. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought the bell rang. Yes, we rang the bell, Nancy. Go on, my dear. Tell her why we rang the bell. Oh, yes. We want to put some coal on the fire, Nancy. Please. And you might as well light the gas, Nancy. This darkness in the afternoon is getting beyond endurance. Yes, sir. You're looking very impudent and pretty this afternoon, Nancy. Do you know that? I don't know that at all, sir, I'm sure. What is it? Another broken heart added to your list? I wasn't aware of breaking any hearts, sir. I'm sure that's not true. And that complexion of yours, that's not true either. I wonder what mysterious lotions you've been employing to enhance your natural beauties. I'm quite natural, sir, I promise you. But you do it adroitly. I grant you that. What are your secrets? Won't you tell us the name of your chemist? Perhaps you could pass it on to Mrs Manningham and help banish her pallor. She'll be most grateful, I have no doubt. I'd be most happy to, I'm sure, sir. Or are women too jealous of their discoveries to pass them on to a rival? I, I don't know, sir. Will that be all you're wanting, sir? Yes. That's all I want, Nancy. Except my tea. I'll be coming directly, sir. Oh, Jack! How can you treat me like that? But, my dear, you're the mistress of the house. It was your business to tell her to put the coal on. It isn't that. It's humiliating me like that, as though I'd do anything to my face and ask her for assistance if I did. But you seem to look upon the servants as our natural equals, so I treated her as one. Besides, I was only trifling with her. It's strange that you can't see how you hurt me. That girl laughs at me enough already. Laughs at you? <laughs> <laughs> what an idea. What makes you think she laughs at you? Oh, I know she does in secret. In fact, she does so openly, more openly every day. But, my dear, if she does that, doesn't the fault lie with you? You mean that I am a laughable person? I don't mean anything. It's you who read meaning into everything, Bella, dear. 
Oh, I wish you weren't such a perfect little silly. Come here and stop it. I've just thought of something rather nice. Something nice? What have you thought of, Jack? I shan't tell you unless you come here. What is it, Jack? What have you thought of? I read that Mr McNaughton, the celebrated actor, is in London for another season. Yes, I read that. What of it, Jack? What of it? What do you suppose? Oh, Jack, dear. Do you mean it? Would you take me to see McNaughton, would you? I not only would take you to see McNaughton, my dear, I am going to take you to see McNaughton. That is, if you want to go. Oh, Jack! What heaven! What heaven! When would you like to go? You have only three weeks, according to the aversion. Oh, what perfect heaven! Let me see, do let me see. There. You see? You can see him in comedy or tragedy, according to your choice. Which would you prefer, Bella, the comedy or the tragedy? Oh, it's so hard to say. Either would be equally wonderful. Which would you choose if you were me? Well... It depends, doesn't it, upon whether you want to laugh or whether you want to cry. Oh, I want to laugh. But then I should like to cry, too. In fact, I should like to do both. Oh, Jack, what made you decide to take me? Well, my dear, you've been very good lately, and I thought it would be well to take you out of yourself. Oh, Jack, dear, you have been so much kinder lately. Is it possible you're beginning to see my point of view? I don't know that I ever differed from it, did I, Bella? Oh, Jack, dear, it's true. It's true. All I need is to be taken out of myself, some little changes, to have some attention from you. Oh, Jack, I'd be better. I could really try to be better. You know in what way. If only I could get out of myself a little more. How do you mean, my dear, exactly? Better? You know... You know in what way, dear, about all that's happened lately. We said we wouldn't speak about it. Oh, no, don't let's speak about that. No, dear, I don't want to. But what I say is so important. I have been better, even in the last week. Haven't you noticed it? And why is it? Because you have stayed in and been kind to me. The other night when you stayed in and played cards with me, it was like the old days, and I went to bed feeling a normal, happy, healthy human being. And then the day after, when you read your book to me, Jack, and we sat by the fire, I felt all my love for you coming back then, Jack, and I slept that night like a child. All these ghastly dreads and terrible, terrible fears seemed to have vanished... And all just because you had given me your time and taken me from brooding on myself in this house all day and night. I wonder if it is that, or whether it's merely that your medicine is beginning to benefit you. No, Jack, dear, it's not my medicine. I've taken my medicine religiously. Haven't I taken it religiously? Much as I detest it. It's more than medicine that I want. It's the medicine of a sweet, sane mind, of being interested in something. Don't you see what I mean? Well... We are talking about gloomy subjects, aren't we? Yes, I don't want to be gloomy, dear. That's the last thing I want to be. I only want you to understand. Say you understand. Well, dear, don't I seem to? Haven't I just said I'm taking you to the theatre? Yes, dear. Yes, you have. Oh, and you've made me so happy, so happy, dear. Well, then, which is it to be? The comedy or the tragedy? You must make up your mind. Oh, dear. Jack, which shall it be? Which shall it be? Oh, it matters so little. Do you understand that, my husband? I'm going to the play. Come in. No, Nancy, I think we'll have it on the table today. Oh, just as you wish, madam. Tell me, Nancy... If you were being taken to the play and had to choose between comedy and tragedy, which would you choose? Me, madam? Oh, uh, I'd go for comedy all the time. Would you? Why would you choose comedy, Nancy? Mm, I like to laugh, madam, I suppose. Do you? Well, I dare say you're right. I must bear it in mind. Mr Manningham's taking me next week, you see. Oh, yes. I hope you enjoy it. I'll bring the muffins out directly. My dear, what are you doing? The little beast. 
Let her put that in her pipe and smoke it. But what has she done? Oh, you don't know her. She tries to torment and score off me all day long. You don't see these things. A man wouldn't. She thinks me a poor thing. And now she can suffer the news that you're taking me to the theatre. I think you imagine things, my dear. Oh, no, I don't. We've been too familiar with her. Oh, come along, my dear. You sit one side and I the other, like two children in the nursery. You seem wonderfully pleased with yourself, Bella. I must take you to the theatre more often, if this is the result. Oh, Jack, I wish you could. I don't really know why we shouldn't. I used to like nothing so much when I was a boy. In fact, you may hardly believe it, but I even had an ambition to be an actor myself at one time. I can well believe it, dear. Come along to your tea now. You know, Bella, that must be a very superb sensation to take a part and lose yourself entirely in the character of someone else. I flatter myself I could have made an actor. Why, of course, my dear. You were cut out for it. Anyone can see that. No. Do you think so? Seriously? I always felt a faint tinge of regret. Of course, one would have required training, but I believe I should have made out. I might have reached the top of the tree, for all I know. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. <laughs> oh, you see how <laughs> fine your voice is. Oh, you've made a great mistake. I wonder. Then, if you had been a famous actor, I should have had a free seat to come and watch you every night of my life, and then called for you at the stage door afterwards. Wouldn't that have been paradise? A paradise of which you would soon tire, my dear. I have no doubt that after a few nights you would be staying at home again, just as you do now. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I should have to keep my eye on you for all the hussies that would be after you. There would be hussies after me, would there? <laughs> that is an added inducement, then. <laughs> Yes, I know it, you wretch. But you wouldn't escape me. Oh, these muffins look delicious. Aren't you glad I thought of them? Here's some salt. You want heaps of it. Oh, Jack, dear, you must forgive me chattering on like this, but I feel so happy. I can see that, my dear. I'm being taken to the play, you see. Here you are. I used to adore these as a child, didn't you? I wonder how long it is since we had them. We haven't had them since we've been married, anyway. Or have we? Have we? I don't know, I'm sure. I don't know. Bella? What is it? What's the matter? What is it now? I have no desire to upset you, Bella. But I have just observed something very much amiss. Will you please rectify it at once while I'm not looking, and we will assume that it has not happened. Amiss? What, what's amiss? Oh, for God's sake, don't turn your back on me. What has happened? You know perfectly well what has happened, Bella, and you will rectify it at once, and I will say no more about it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you have left your tea. Tell me what it is. Tell me. Are you trying to make a fool of me, Bella? What I refer to you is on the wall behind you. If you will put it back, I will forget the matter. The wall behind me? What? Oh, yes. The picture has been taken down. Yes. The pictures. Well, who has taken it down? Why has it been taken down? Yes. Why has it been taken down? Why, indeed? You alone can answer that, Bella. Why was it taken down before? Will you please take it from wherever you have hidden it and put it back on the wall again? Oh, but I haven't hidden it, Jack. I didn't do it. Oh, for God's sake, look at me. I didn't do it. I don't know where it is. Someone else must have done it. Someone else? Are you suggesting that I should play such a fantastic and wicked trick? No, dear, no, but someone else. Before God, I didn't do it. Someone else, dear, someone else. Someone else, eh? Someone else? Will you leave go of me? Oh. You repel me, you half-witted thing! <sighs> We'll see about someone else. Oh, Jack, don't ring the bell. Don't ring it. Don't call the servants to witness my shame. 
Oh, it's not my shame, for I haven't done it. But don't call the servants. Tell them not to come. <laughs> Let's talk of this between ourselves. Don't call that girl in, please. Would you leave go of me and sit down there? S someone else, eh? Well, we shall see. <laughs> You had better pull yourself together, hadn't you? Come in. Ah, Elizabeth. Do you notice anything amiss in this room? Look carefully around the walls and see if you notice anything amiss. Well, Elizabeth, what do you notice? Nothing, sir. I except the picture's been taken down. Exactly. The picture has been taken down. You noticed it at once. Now, was that picture in its place when you dusted the room this morning? Yes, sir. It it was, sir. I don't understand, sir. Neither do I, Elizabeth. Neither do I. And now, before you go, just one question. Was it you who removed that picture, Elizabeth? No, sir. Of course I ain't, sir. You did not. And have you ever, at any time, removed that picture from its proper place? No, sir. Never, sir. Why should I, sir? Indeed, why should you? And now, please, will you kiss that Bible which lies on that desk there as a token of your truthfulness? Very well, you may go. And please send Nancy in here at once. Yes, sir. Oh, Jack, spare me that girl. Don't call her in. I'll say anything. I'll say that I did it. I did it, Jack. I did it. Oh, don't have that girl in. Don't. Will you have the goodness to contain yourself? <gasps> Come in. Yes, sir. Did you want me? Yes, I do want you, Nancy. If you will look at the wall on your left, you will see that the picture has gone. Oh, my word. So it is. What a rum go. I did not ask for any comment on your part, Nancy. Kindly be less insolent and answer what I ask you. Did you take that picture down or did you not? Me? Of course I didn't. What should I want to move it for, sir? Very good. Now, will you kiss that Bible lying there, please, as a solemn oath that you did not, and you may go? Willingly, sir. If I'd have done it, I... That is all, Nancy. You may go. There. I think we may now be said to have demonstrated conclusively... Give me that Bible. Give it to me. Let me kiss it too. There. There. Do you see? There. Do you see that I kiss it? For God's sake, be careful what you do. Do you desire to commit sacrilege above all else? It is no sacrilege, Jack. Someone else has committed sacrilege. Now, see, I swear before God Almighty that I never touch that picture. There. Then, by God, you are mad. And you don't know what you do. You unhappy wretch! You're stark, gibbering mad like your wretched mother before you! Oh, Jack! You promised you would never say that again. The time has come to face facts, Bella. If this progresses, you will not be much longer under my protection. Jack! I'm going to make a last appeal to you. I'm going to make a last appeal. I'm desperate, Jack. Can't you see that I'm desperate? If you can't, you must have a heart of stone. Go on. What do you wish to say? Jack, I may be going mad, like my poor mother. But if I am mad, you have to treat me gently. Jack, before God, I never lie to you knowingly. If I have taken down that picture, I have not known it. I have not known it. If I took it down on those other occasions, I did not know it either. Jack, if I steal your things, your rings, your keys, your pencils and your handkerchiefs, and you find them later at the bottom of my box, as indeed you do, then I do not know that I have done it. Jack, if I commit these fantastic, meaningless mischiefs, so meaningless, why should I take a picture down from its place? If I do all these things, then I am certainly going off my head and must be treated kindly and gently so that I may get well. Oh, you must bear with me, Jack. Bear with me. Not storm and rage. God knows I'm trying, Jack. I'm trying.
Oh, for God's sake, believe that I'm trying and be kind to me. Bella, my dear, have you any idea where that picture is now? Why, yes, I suppose it is behind the cupboard. Will you please go and see? Yes, yes. Yes, it's here. Then you did know where it was, Bella. You did know where it was. No, no. I only supposed it was. I only supposed it was because it was found there before. It was found there twice before. Don't you see? I didn't know. I didn't. There is no sense walking around the room with a picture in your hand, Bella. Go and put it back in its proper place. Oh, look at our tea. We were having our tea with muffins. Now, Bella, I said a moment ago that we've got to face facts. And that is what we've got to do. I'm not going to say anything at the moment, for my feelings are running too high. In fact, I'm going out immediately, and I suggest that you go to your room and lie down a little in the dark. Oh, no, no. Not to my room. For God's sake, don't send me to my room. There was no question of sending you to your room, Bella. You know perfectly well that you may do exactly as you please. Everything oh, is... I feel faint, Jack. I feel faint. Very well. Now, take things quietly and come and sit down. Oh. Where are your salts? Here they are. Now, my dear, I'm going to leave you in peace. Have you got to go? Must you go? Must you always leave me alone after these dreadful scenes? No, no argument, please. I had to go in any case after tea, and I'm merely leaving a little earlier, that's all. Now, is there anything I can get for you? No, Jack dear, nothing. You go. Very good. Oh, by the way, I shall be passing the grocer, and I might as well pay that bill of his and get it done with. Where is it, my dear? I gave it to you, didn't I? Yes, dear. It's on the desk. I'll, uh, I'll get No, dear, it. don't move. Don't move. I can find it. I shall be glad to get the thing off my chest. Where is it, dear? Is it in one of these drawers? No, it's on the top. I put it there this afternoon. All right. We'll find it. We'll find it. Uh, are you sure it's here, dear? There's nothing here except writing paper. Oh, Jack, I, I'm quite sure it is there. Will you look carefully? All right, dear, don't worry. Lie down. It's of no importance. We'll find it. No. It's not here. It must be in one of the drawers. No, it's not in one of the drawers. I put it here on the top. Oh, you're not going to tell me My this dear, is calm gone, yourself, are you? Calm yourself. Oh, I made it out here myself. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Oh, now you're going to say that I've hidden this. Oh, my God, what new trick is this you're playing upon oh, me? Oh, it was there this afternoon. I put it there. This is a plot. This is a filthy plot. You're all against me. It's a plot. Will you control yourself? Will you control yourself? <laughs> Listen to me, madam. If you utter another sound, I'll knock you down and take you to your room and lock you in darkness for a week. <gasps> I have been too lenient with you, and I mean to alter my tactics. Oh, God help me. God help me. May God help you indeed. Now listen to me. I am going to leave until ten o'clock. In that time, you will recover that paper and admit to me that you have been lying and purposely concealed it. <laughs> if not, you will take the consequences you are going to see a doctor, madam. More than one doctor, and they shall decide what this means. Now, do you understand me? Oh, God, be patient with me. If I am mad, be patient with I me. I have been patient with you and controlled myself long enough. It is now for you to control yourself or to take the consequences. Think upon that, Bella. Jack, Jack, don't go, Jack. You're still going to take me to the theatre, aren't you? What a question to ask me at such a time. No, madam, emphatically, I am not. <gasps> you play fair by me, and I'll play fair by you. If we are going to be enemies, you and I, <gasps> you will find it. It is I who shall get the best of it. <gasps> oh. 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 
Madam, madam. Yes, yes. What is it, Elizabeth? Leave me alone. Madam, there's somebody called. Oh, well, who is it? I, I don't want to be disturbed. It's a gentleman, madam. He wants to see you. Oh, well, tell him to go, Elizabeth. He wants to see my husband. My husband's out. No, madam. He wants to see you. You must see him, madam. Oh, leave me alone. Tell him to go away. I want to be left alone. Madam, madam, I don't know what's going on between you and the master, but you've got to hold up, madam. You've got to hold up. Oh, I'm going out of my mind, Elizabeth. That's what's going on. Don't talk like that, madam. You've got to be brave. You mustn't go on lying here in the dark, or your mind will go. You must see this gentleman. It's you he wants to see, not the master. He's waiting below. Come, madam. It will take you out of yourself. Oh, my God. What new torment is this? I'm not in a fit state, I tell you. Come, madam. I'll turn up the light. There. Now you'll be all right. Oh, Elizabeth, what have you done? I can't have anyone in. I'm not fit to be seen. You look all right, madam. You mustn't take on so. Now, I'll call him up. <laughs> Will you come up, please, sir? <sighs> Thank you. Oh, good evening, Mrs Manningham, I believe. How are you, Mrs Manningham? Uh, how do you do? I'm very much afraid You're I... very much afraid you don't know me from Adam. That's about the root of the matter, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not that. Uh, but no doubt you have come to see my husband. Oh, no. You couldn't be further out. On the contrary, I have chosen this precise moment to call when I knew your husband was out. May I take off my things and sit down? Why, yes, I, I suppose you may. You're a good deal younger and more attractive than I thought, you know. But you're looking very pale. Have you been crying? Really? I'm afraid I don't understand at all. You will do so, madam, very shortly. You're the lady who's going off her head, aren't you? What made you say that? Who are you? What have you come to talk about? Well, of one thing you can be certain, I have not come to talk about the weather. Though that indeed merits a world of comment at the moment, uh, but you're running away with things, Mrs Manningham, and asking me a good deal I can't answer at once. Instead of that, I'm going to ask you a question or two. Now, please, will you come here and give me your hands? <clears throat> now, Mrs Manningham, I want you to take a good look at me and see if you are not looking at someone to whom you can give your trust. I am a perfect stranger to you and you can read little in my face besides that. But I can read a great deal in yours. What? What can you read in mine? Why, madam, I can read the tokens of one who has travelled a very long way upon the path of sorrow and doubt, and will have, I fear, to travel a little further before she comes to the end. But I fancy she is coming towards the end for all that. Come now, are you going to trust me and listen to me? I'm old enough to be your grandfather. Who are you? 
God knows I need help. I very much doubt whether God knows anything of the sort, Mrs Manningham. Had he done so, I believe he would have come to your aid before this. But I am here, and so you must give me your face. Who are you? Are you a doctor? Oh, nothing so learned, ma'am. Just a plain police detective. Police detective? Yes, or was ten years ago. At any rate, still detective enough to see that you've been interrupted in your tea. <laughs> Couldn't you start again and let me have a cup? Why, yes. Yes, I will give you a cup. It only wants water. You never heard of the celebrated Sergeant Ruff, madam. Sergeant Ruff, who solved the Claudesley Diamond case. Sergeant Ruff, who hunted down the Camberwell dogs. Sergeant Ruff, who brought Sandham himself to justice. Or were all such sensations before your time? Sandham? Why, yes, I have heard of Sandham. The murderer, the throttler. Yes, madam, Sandham the throttler. And you are now looking at the man who gave Sandham to the man who throttled him. And that was the common hangman. In fact, Mrs Manningham, you have in front of you one who was quite a personage in his day, believe it or not. I quite believe it. Won't you sit down? I'm afraid it won't be very hot. Ah, thank you. How long have you been married, Mrs Manningham? Seven years, and a little. Where have you lived during all that time, Mrs Manningham? Why, uh, first we went abroad, then we lived in Yorkshire, and then six months ago my husband took this house. Oh, thank you. And does your husband always leave you alone like this in the evenings? Yes. He goes to his club, I believe, and does business. So you believe? Yes. And does your husband give you a free run of the whole house while he's out? Yes. Well, no. Not the top floor. Why do you ask? Ah. Not the top floor. No. No. W will you have some sugar? What were you saying? Before I go any further, Mrs Manningham, I must tell you, there's a leakage in this household. You have a maid called... Nancy? Yes, yes. And Nancy walks out of an evening with a young man named Booker in my employ. I only live a few streets away from you, you know. Oh, yes. Well, there is hardly anything which goes on in this house which is not described in detail to Booker. And from that quarter it reaches me. Oh, I knew it. I knew she talked. Now I know it, she shall be dismissed. Oh, no. No such retribution is going to overtake her at the moment, Mrs Manningham. In fact, I fancy you are going to be heavily in debt to your maid, Nancy. If it were not for her indiscretions, I should not be here now, should I? What do you mean? What is this mystery? You must not keep me in the dark. What is it? I'm afraid I shall have to keep you in the dark for a little, Mrs Manningham, as I'm still quite far down in the dark myself. Can I have another lump of sugar in this? Oh, yes. Thank you. We were talking about the top floor. There is a bedroom above this, and above that again is the top floor. Is that right? Yes. Now, have you ever been up to that top floor? No, never. It's shut up. My husband has forbidden it. No one goes up there. Not even a servant to dust? No. Rather funny. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. Now, Mrs Manningham, to ask a personal question, when did you first get the notion into your head that your reason was playing you tricks? How did you know? Never mind how I know. How did it begin? I always had that dread... My mother died insane when she was quite young, when she was my age. But only in the last six months, in this house, things began to happen. Which are driving you mad with fear? Yes, which are driving me mad with fear. Is it the house itself you fear, Mrs Manningham? Yes, I suppose it is. I hate the house. I always did. And has the top floor got anything to do with it? Yes, yes it has. How did you know? <sighs> 
that's how all of this dreadful horror began. And now you interest me beyond measure. Do tell me about the top floor. I don't know what to say. It all sounds incredible. It's when I'm alone at night. Mm -hmm. I get the idea that somebody's walking about up there. (sighs) Up there. At night, when my husband's out, I hear noises from my bedroom, but I'm too afraid to go up. Have you told your husband about this? No, I'm afraid to. He gets angry. He says I imagine things which don't exist. It never struck you, did it, that it might be your own husband walking about up there? Yes, that is what I thought. Mm. But I thought I must be mad. Tell me how you knew. Why not tell me first how you knew, Mrs. Manningham? Oh, it's true, then. I knew it. I knew it. When he leaves this house, he comes back. He comes back and walks up there above, up and down, up and down. He comes back like a ghost. How does he get up there? That's what we're going to find out, Mrs. Manningham. But there are such commonplace resources as roofs and fire escapes, you know. Now, please don't look frightened. Your husband is no ghost, believe me. And you are very far from mad. Tell me now, what made you first think it was him? It was the light. Hmm? The gaslight. It went down and it went up. Oh, thank God I can tell this to someone at last. I don't know who you are, but I must tell you. Now try to keep calm. You can tell me just as well sitting down, can't you? Won't you sit down? Yes, yes. The light, did you say? Did you see a light from a window? No, in this house. Hmm? I can tell everything by the light of the gas. You see that mantle there? Now it's burning full. But if an extra light went on in the kitchen, or someone lit it in the bedroom, then this one would sink down. It's the same all over the house. Yes. Yes, that's just a question of insufficient pressure. And it's the same in mine, but go on, please. Every night, after he goes out, I find myself waiting for something. Then all at once I look round the room and see that the light is slowly going down. At first I tried not to notice it, but after a time it began to get on my nerves. I would go all over the house to see if anyone had put on an extra light, but they never had. It's always the same time, about ten minutes after he goes out. That's what made me think that somehow he had come back and it was he who was walking about up there. Mm. I go up to the bedroom, but I don't stay there because I hear noises overhead. I want to scream and run out of the house. I sit here for hours, terrified, waiting for him to come back. And I always know when he's coming again. Suddenly, the light goes up again, and ten minutes afterwards, I hear his key in the lock downstairs, and he's back again. Very strange indeed. You know, Mrs Manningham... You should have been a policeman. Are you laughing at me? Do you think I imagine everything too? Oh, no. I was merely praising the keenness of your observation. I not only think you are right in your supposition, I think you have made a very remarkable discovery, and one which may have very far-reaching consequences. Far-reaching? How? Well, let's leave it for the moment. Tell me... That is not the only cause, is it, which has lately given you reason to doubt your sanity? Has anything else been happening? Don't be afraid to tell me. Yes, there are other things. I hardly dare speak of them. It has been going on for so long. This business of the gas has only brought it to a head. It seems that my mind and memory are beginning to play me tricks. Tricks? What sort of tricks? When? Incessantly, but more and more of late. He gives me things to look after, and when he asks for them, they are gone and can never be found. Hmm. Then he misses his rings or his studs or his razors, and I will hunt the place for them, and he will find them lying hidden at the bottom of my workbox. Twice the door of that room was found locked with the key vanished. That was also found at the bottom of my box. Only today, before you came, that picture had been taken from the wall and hidden. 
Who could have done it but myself? I try to remember. I break my heart trying to remember, but I can't. Oh, and then there was that terrible business about the dog. The dog? We have a little dog. A few weeks ago, it was found with its paw hurt. Ah. He believes... Oh, God, how can I tell you what he believes? That I had hurt the dog. He does not let the dog near me now. He keeps it in the kitchen and I am not allowed to see it. I begin to doubt, don't you see? I begin to believe, I imagine everything. Or perhaps I do. Are you here? Is this a dream too? Who are you? I'm afraid they are going to lock me up. Do you know, Mrs Manningham? It has occurred to me that you'd be all the better for a little medicine. Medicine? Are you a doctor? You're not a doctor, are you? No, I'm not a doctor. But that doesn't mean that a little medicine would do you any harm. But I have medicine. He makes me take it. It does me no good and I hate it. How can medicine help a mind that's ill? Oh, but mine's an exceptional medicine. I have some with me now. You must try it. What medicine is it? You shall sample it and see. You see, it has been employed by humanity for several ages for the purpose of the instantaneous removal of dark fears and doubt. That seems to fit you, doesn't it? The removal of doubt? How could a medicine affect that? Ah, that we don't know. The fact remains that it does. Here we are. You see, it comes from Scotland. Now, madam, have you such a thing handy as two glasses or two cups? Why, are you having some too? Oh, yes. In fact, I am having some above all things. We could use these cups if you like. No, I will get you... Ah, thank you. The very thing. Now we shan't be long. What is it? I so dislike medicine. What does it taste like? Delicious. Something between ambrosia and methylated spirits. Do you mean to say you've never tasted good Scotch whisky, Mrs Manningham? Whisky? But I must not take whisky. I can't do that. You underestimate your powers, Mrs Manningham. You see, I don't want you thinking you can't trust your reason. This will give you faith in your reason like nothing else. Now, for some water... Uh, All right, this will do. There. Tell me, did you ever hear of the cabman's friend, Mrs Manningham? The cabman's friend? Yes. (laughs) How nice to see you smile. Here's to your very good health. Well, go on. There. Is it so nasty? (laughs) No, I rather like it. Uh. My mother used to give us this as children when we had a fever. Ah, then you're a hardened whisky drinker. (laughs) But you'll enjoy it better sitting down. Yes. What were you saying? Who is the cabman's friend? Ah, the cabman's friend. You should ask me who was the cabman's friend, Mrs Manningham, for she was an old lady who died many, many years ago. An old lady years ago? What has she to do with me? A great deal, I fancy, if you will follow me patiently. Her name was Barlow. Alice Barlow. And she was an old lady of great wealth and decided eccentricities. In fact, her principal mania in life was the protection of cabmen. You may think that an extraordinary hobby, but in her odd way she did a lot of good. She provided these men with shelters, clothing, pensions and so forth. And that was her little contribution to the sum of the world's happiness, or rather, her little stand against the sum of the world's pain. There is a great deal of pain in this world, Mrs Manningham, you know. Well, it was not my privilege to know her, but it was my duty on just one occasion to see her. That was when her throat was cut open, and she lay dead on the floor of her own house. Oh, how horrible! Do you mean she was murdered? Yes, she was murdered. I was only a comparatively young officer at the time, but it made an extremely horrible, in fact, I may say, lasting impression on me. The murderer was never discovered. 
but the motive was obvious enough. The Barlow rubies had been inherited by her, and it was well known that she kept them, without any proper precautions, in her bedroom on an upper floor. She lived alone, except for a deaf servant in the basement. Well, for that she paid the penalty of her life. But what... There were some sensational features about the case. The man seemed to have got in about ten at night and stayed till dawn. Apart, presumably, from the jewels, there were only a few trinkets taken. But the whole house had been turned upside down, and in the upper room every single thing was flung about or torn open. Even the cushions of the chairs were ripped up with his bloody knife, and the police decided that it must have been a revengeful maniac as well as a robber. I had other theories, but... I was a nobody then, and not in charge of the case. What were your theories? Well, it seemed to me, from all that I gathered here and there, that the old lady might have been an eccentric, but that she was by no means a fool. It seemed to me that she might have been one too clever for that man. We presume he killed her to silence her, but what then? What if she had not been so careless? What if she had got those jewels hidden away in some inconceivably cunning place, in the walls, floored down, bricked in, maybe? What if the only person who could tell him where they were was lying dead on the floor? Would not that account, Mrs Manningham, for all the strange confusion in which the place was found? Can't you picture him, Mrs Manningham, searching through the night, ransacking the place, hour after hour, growing more and more desperate, until at last the dawn comes, and he has to slink out into the pale street, the blood and wreckage of the night behind. And the deaf servant down in the basement, sleeping like a dog through it all. Oh, how horrible! How horrible indeed! And was the man ever found? No, Mrs Manningham. The man was never found. Nor has the Barlow jewellery ever come to light. Then perhaps he found it after all, and may be alive today. I think he is almost certainly alive today. But I don't believe he found what he wanted. That is, if my theory is right. Then the jewels may still be where the old lady hid them. Indeed, Mrs Manningham. If my theory is right, the jewels must still be where she hid them. But then, of course, it was only a theory. And that formed in quite a young man long enough ago. The official conclusion was quite otherwise. The police, naturally and quite excusably, presumed that the murderer had got them. And there was no reopening of matters in those days. Soon enough, the public forgot about it. I forgot about it myself. But it would be funny, wouldn't it, Mrs Manningham, if after all these years I should turn out to be right? Yes, yes, indeed. But what has this to do with me? Ah, that is the whole question, Mrs Manningham. What, indeed? What has the obscure murder of an old lady twenty years ago to do with an attractive, though I am afraid at present somewhat pale and wan, young lady in this house, who believes she is going out of her mind and watches the gaslight going up and down when her husband is out at night? Well, I believe there is a link, however remote, wild and strange it may be, and that is why I am here. It's all so confusing... Won't you... Do you conceive it possible, Mrs Manningham, that the man might not have given up hope of one day getting at the treasure which lay there and have bided his time until he could somehow re-enter the house? Yes, yes, possibly, but how... Can you conceive that he may have waited years, five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years even, time in which he may have done many things gone abroad, got married even, until at last his chance came to resume the search begun on that terrible night. You don't follow where I am leading at all, do you, Mrs Manningham? Follow you? Yes, I think so. You know, Mrs Manningham, of the old theory that the criminal always returns to the scene of his crime? Ah, oh, yes. But in this case... There is something more than morbid compulsion. 
There is treasure there to be unearthed. If only he can search again, search methodically, without fear of interruption, without causing suspicion. And how would he do that? Don't you think... What's the matter, Mrs. Manning? Be quiet. Be quiet. He has come back. Look, look at the light. It is going down. Wait. There. He has come back, you see. He is upstairs now. Dear me. Now, how very odd that is. How very odd indeed. He is in the house, I tell you. You must go. He will know you are here. You must go. How dark it is. You could hardly see to read. You must go. He is in the house. Please go. Quiet, Mrs. Madigan. Quiet. You've got to keep your head. Don't you see my meaning yet? Don't you understand that this was the house? House? What house? The old woman's house, Mrs. Manningham. This house, here, these rooms, these walls. Twenty years ago, Alice Barlow lay dead in this room. Twenty years ago, the man who murdered her ransacked this house, below and above, but could not find what he sought. What if he is still searching, Mrs. Manningham? What if he is up there, still, searching? Now do you see why you must keep your head? But my husband, my husband is up there. Precisely that, Mrs. Manningham. Your husband. You see, I am afraid you are married to a tolerantly dangerous gentleman. Now drink this quickly, as we have a great deal to do. <laughs> 